Hi, I'm Joanna Davis. I'm the Public Art Manager for the City of Lancaster. I actually work in the Office of Public Art within the City of Lancaster. Our entire organization encompasses not only myself, but a board of seven people, as well as lots of volunteers and folks that have identified as public art advocates. As the public art program has progressed in the years since it started, um, one of the park renovations was around um, a, a park adjacent to a local public school called Martin Luther King Jr. Elementary School. The city needed to redo a fence that was surrounding uh, a wading pool out there. Um, and so they looked to incorporate um, artist work into that fence. So the, the public art department compiled a group of neighborhood stakeholders and um, they selected an artist named Beatrice Carone um, to work on the project. And Beatrice worked directly with the school kids in um, Martin Luther King Jr. School to create the, the inspiration impetus and actually directly the artwork that eventually ended up on that fence. And community members had a tremendous amount of input, even uh, something that's seemingly small but would have been really sad if it was overlooked. One community member added that because there's a huge Spanish-speaking population in the area of that school that the fence has a quote of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. on it. But the, the neighbor pointed out that it should be translated in Spanish as well. So now both gates, um, either side of the gate, one shows the English translation and one shows the Spanish translation. So just an example of how crucial it is to have neighbors involved in projects. Around um, 2016, we were fortunate enough to have uh, a new public art master plan written by Renee Pachaki and Jennifer McGregor. They came in and um, worked with constituents in our city and our community for many months and created a, a new um, master plan, 10-year plan for public art that really meets um, our city and its residents and communities where they are um, and allows public art to really be a resource and a tool for community growth and, and to reflect our city and its communities as our city continues to grow and change and develop. And so we're really committed to grassroots level thinking um, when we form projects, always starting with the community, um, starting with artists' ideas, starting with neighbors and um, stakeholders, residents, community organizations to inform every step of the way um, with any project that we do. So we have a lot of permanent pieces of public art within our city. About 80 in total. The real focus of our program uh, now is working with neighborhoods. We're really interested in temporary public art projects that can really give folks a chance to, um, to reflect our city where it is now and as it continues to grow and change. Temporary public art also gives a lot of opportunities, so there's just more projects so there's more opportunities um, for more artists to make things and that lends itself to more equitable practices which is something that we're very focused on. One really good example of temporary public art is um, our Inside Out Dreamers project that took place here in um, the winter of 2017. It was the coldest day in December and Lancastrians showed up um, to get their photo taken um, as a way to show their support and solidarity with folks that live here and are affected by the DACA policy. Um, it was a project that was brought to us by the Emerson Collective. Um, they were working in, in collaboration with JR, who's known for his Inside Out projects. and. Um, when they came here, they took tons of photos of people, and then um, we pasted them up on the side of um, two sides of a very prominent building in downtown Lancaster. That was a project that really allowed for communities here to connect around art, and also um, for communities to be heard that don't always have a voice. We also have several exhibition spaces under our purview, one of which is um, called Station Cases. We have two cases within the Lancaster train station that are 
solely um, reserved solely for the purpose of showing original artwork. So we put out calls and biannually um, change over the exhibits there for original site-specific sculpture. Um, one way that we really that we work in neighborhoods is through something called PACE. PACE stands for Public Art Civic Engagement, and PACE artists use art as a mechanism for starting conversation through that process, building community, um, learning about what's already there in, in the neighborhood, what are things that we can do to support what's already there, um, who are what are artists, who are artists or what are artful practices that are going on in different neighborhoods that maybe other people don't call public art, but we do and we'd love to support. Um, artists have a really unique ability to be able to come at um, problems from new perspectives. Another way we're working in neighborhoods is through a bunch of different temporary art projects. Um, an artist named Selena Almanzar has been um, creating work in a neighborhood in the southwest part of our city where we will be renovating a park um, next year. This is a neighborhood that has um, really strong neighborhood groups that already exist and that the city collaborates with regularly. But we were interested in um, really trying to get input about the upcoming re renovation from folks that maybe aren't joiners and don't necessarily go to all of those meetings. In order to do that, we wanted to, um, we wanted an artist to create circumstances where she could reach people in surprising ways and learn about their park usage and learn about what their needs are, wants for the new park, but also really to understand that the renovation, although there's a lot of new neighbors coming to this neighborhood, um, that the park is not being updated for those folks alone, it's, it's being updated for everybody um, who has access to the, this crucial public space. So it's really important for us to um, make sure that everybody who, who lives near the park um, feels ownership of that public space. So Selena Almanzar set up several different projects that are continuing and will continue um, until the, the beginning of the renovation. And one of those projects is called Art Pop, a weekly event on the weekends she would set up in the summer, set up a tent, a really colorful tent, and just provide all sorts of art materials for uh, families to come and make art. Uh, it was wildly successful. She, there was an abundance of art created, and she, um, she was able to really connect with a lot of families there and find out um, all sorts of information about how they feel about the park, which then was translated and still is translated directly to some of those neighborhood groups. From that art pop, she started to um, collect photographs of folks that she'd been working with for a mural um, on an adjacent wall to the park. And she created a mural called uh, This Neighborhood Is. That's work that continues and we're really excited, thrilled to have her on board doing that. One of the many ways that we look to reach folks in the community um, is with our public art walks. So biannually, we host um, a free public art walk where we connect students in um, different schools to specific pieces in the public art collection of the city. Those students learn about the pieces and then they act as docents on a public art tour for the public. Um, we usually try to, that's, we focus on a different area of the city each time and try to really find um, a connection between where the students might live and study and the pieces that we're talking about. It's really important for um, children and, and, grow, and adults to understand their ownership of these public art pieces and connect with them. We're very grateful for the funding that we've gotten so far from the Pennsylvania Council of the Arts through the Brooks Arts Council um, via our project streams. And thank you so much for considering our application.